Similarly, you go into business and you make your first one million naira or dollar, and you say to yourself, it's not enough, I can't save here, the letter I will save. When you make a billion, you will not save. So it also relates to all of you who aspire to become business people. Whatever income you have, if you cannot make a little saving out of it, you can't save anything. And we all know the basic theory of capital formation and the importance and of capital formation for even entrepreneurship. You have to. And that is why at times when you inherit resources, some people don't manage it very well. That discipline of saving, that saving culture, I think, is very important. Anyway, so, first thing. <coughs> Then, you know, secondary school, uh, you know, studying at every level, it just, and for me, it's almost like, wow, this, I imagine, this is, it's hard to end up, this, like, I'll try to improve, I mean, get better, etc. And uh, it also has, what is what I'm saying, affects a bit my competitiveness, you know, as a person. Because, uh, you know, you like something, and you want to get, like, as part it helps, it has to go side. But let's go on. Then, uh, let's say, when I worked my, my at uh, Austin Trust Bank under Chief Banning, <coughs> I thought he greatly influenced me, very significantly. Because, you know, when today colleagues I work with say Tony is fast, you know, if you send something to him, he gets back quickly to you, he reads. Chief Banning was, uh, I'm glad you, for some of you who, uh, from Harvard, he was a, a young Nigerian. He attended Harvard Business School, and extremely intelligent. Uh, you know, I he became CEO also of a bank. I think at 35, 36, he was very young too. He was a very young achiever. And so we sent a memo to him. He will come back to you very quickly. And I only believe that for leadership in developing people. People must know where you stand on issues and pump it. Only wasting that. But you know, for me, I have three approaches. There are things that come, I deal with immediately. Simple issues. <laughs> there are ones that are a bit tough, so I need to think. <laughs> so it's okay. I will reflect. At times, I will write to the person and say, please, a little more time. I apologize. Anyway. Then the third one is, which is where my default mode does not make sense. I like to I like to caucus with people. I like to see people that want to say what do you think. So let's look at it. Okay, how about this person? Have you looked at it this way? looked at this way? But I believe first as a leader that the first rule is assemble a formidable team. Get and put in place a team that is better than you. If you have a great team, the product of that team will be wonderful. And so, if you do have a blend with a great team, why don't you take advantage of the team? Instead of one person brain, then have several stars thinking about some the outcome be wonderful. So he was a wonderful man. Got back to me on issues. This is what I think, this is what I don't think. And I said to myself, if I ever get to the top, <coughs> I would also do the same. Because I knew how what I taught. When I was a branch manager, I became one of the most powerful branch managers at a very young age of 26. Because my boss got back to me on issues. And so I would tell customers, yes, no. And the news was all over. Tony is very powerful. But <laughs> I was powerful because I had information. I had clear direction on what should to do. He also gave me early stage and early life confidence in myself. I recall a certain man, A.K. Horsford, was, A.K. Horsford is a strong Nigerian. He just retired then or was SSS director or some, something. And he was held in a very important position. And my boss sent me, so I should go and meet him or something. I thought, wow, well, how can this man send me that to go and see these people? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do this. And he said to me, I need a feedback from you. He gave me 14 hours feedback. I got time to get back to him. So I realized that there was no way to avoid it. I had to go see him. 
And you know, when you, when you confront challenges in life, and you overcome those challenges, they transform your life without you even and so when I work with colleagues and I ask them to say certain things and they complain, I just laugh at them and they say, this people don't understand, this man doesn't understand. The opportunity he or she has to change, to overcome something, 